Hello, I'm Johnny. I've been working with computers now for about 13 years. My specialty is network support and administration. I also do a good deal of repair work for home users. I have numerous degrees and certifications. But I consider myself more of a practical, meat and potatoes type of guy. Practical knowledge, tools that you, as a computer user, will use every day, common sense stuff. That is the whole purpose of this workshop, if you want to call it that. No matter how advanced we've become, the vast majority of the population is not aware of scams, half-truths, false advertisements, and blatant lies when it comes to computers, and especially being on the Internet. And because of this, we get taken advantage of, and I hate that. So hopefully, we will take with us some useful knowledge that will protect us from those scams. We're going to be looking at three main areas. Awareness being mindful of the dangers that lurk on the internet. Protection, measures that we can take to protect us while we are online. And maintenance, things that you can do to keep your computer running smoothly, and also ways to reclaim some disk space. Most of this will be geared toward people who use Windows, now, who has ever seen Mythbusters? Well, I'm about to bust a myth. The myth is that Windows is the most vulnerable out of all the major operating systems. The problem with Windows is not that it's inherently vulnerable. It's the fact that almost everybody uses Windows People who write computer viruses and other malicious programs want to infect as many computers as possible. It's the same reason terrorists bomb heavily populated areas, like New York rather than, say, Arizona. Windows is a much, much bigger, much sweeter target than Mac or Linux. So it simply stands to reason that the larger target will be attacked more often. Now I'm not a Bill Gates disciple by any means. Windows annoys me quite often, like everybody else. But it is the most widespread operating system for a reason. With all of its deficiencies, it works and works well if it's maintained properly. Okay, the first thing we'll look at is awareness. This concept applies to every other aspect of our lives. If we were to go around oblivious to our surroundings, we would likely get hurt rather quickly. I grew up in southwest Georgia, and that's where I went to college. I didn't have a car, and the public transit system was at best, unreliable. So I would drive my chair to class most of the time. That was a ten-mile round trip through not-so-safe neighborhoods, crossing four-lane highways, avoiding rather angry dogs, and the ever-annoying pothole. It was an eventful trip going to and from school. But if I had not been keenly aware of my surroundings, paying attention to sound, smell, and sight, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you good people. Being aware, while on the internet is just as important. You've seen these commercials on TV about this program that is supposed to boost the speed of your computer. They claim that this program is all-in-one protection. 
that was their first mistake. There's no such thing as only one protection in the computer world. One of my last certifications was focused on computer security from various threats, both man-made and natural. When it comes to computer security, you want to have multiple layers of protection. In World War II, our aircraft carriers were the most important ships in the fleet. We protected them with several different kind of ships. They were usually arranged in concentric circles around the carriers. Any threats that made it through the first line of defense would encounter a second and third, and fourth, and sometimes a fifth line of defense. It turned out to be extremely effective. In the computer world, layering protection is the only effective strategy. I know you've seen these commercials for programs like Max My Computer and Fix My PC and all the others. I know you've seen them because they are constantly advertising these programs. That should be your first red flag right there. If a software company has to constantly advertise to significantly move units, it suggests that the product is weak. The next red flag. These commercials never really tell you what company made the software. All you're given is a website. Microsoft makes Windows. Apple makes Mac. Google makes Android. For all you know, neo-Nazi Afghan terrorists could be making this software. Probably not, but who knows. If you're proud of your product, put your name behind it. Ever wonder if all these different boost your speed programs are actually the same program, just with a different face? The third and biggest red flag has to be when those magical words, all in one protection, are uttered. Did they just say that? Yes, I'm afraid they just said that. These programs might clean up your computer by deleting unnecessary files. They might even, marginally, speed up your computer. But when they say that they offer all-in-one protection, they are lying to you. It sounds great. One less thing for you to worry about, right? If you have this program, you'll be totally protected. Once again, they are lying to you. For the people who see this video, they can no longer play on your ignorance. The next very popular technology now is online backup. Again, online backup or online storage is in fact a useful tool, in some circumstances. However, does anybody know where all of your documents, pictures, music, and videos are being stored? I don't know for sure, but it's likely on a server over in India somewhere. The people who look after these servers are paid around five dollars an hour. They are likely the cheapest, least trained, least expensive workers that can do the job. Dropbox, a popular online storage provider, recently admitted that they had full access to all the files of its customers. What if one of its employees is not so trustworthy? During a contract job I was involved in a few years back, 
We use Dropbox to store contact information of probably 8,000 people. Names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, children's names, driver's license numbers of 8,000 people. Can anybody say lawsuit? I'm not saying don't ever use online storage. I use online storage every day. It's very convenient. I'm writing a book. I store a copy online so that I can work on it from anywhere. My laptop, my tablet, or even my phone. I'm saying be very careful with what you decide to store online. In my opinion, online storage shouldn't be used as a long-term storage solution. What if the servers where your files are stored crash? What if the company is hacked and files are stolen? Sony was hacked in 2011 and customers' information, including credit card numbers, were stolen. This was Sony, one of the largest entertainment companies on the planet. Bottom line, online storage is a wonderful tool, if used smartly. Consider an alternative. If you need to back up your files, external hard drives are pretty cheap nowadays. We'll talk more about backing up your files later. Another area to be aware of is social engineering. Simply put, social engineering is the act of manipulating people into divulging confidential information. In the computer world, that's done by three major methods. The first being scam emails. These could be anything from a would-be Russian woman wanting to marry you, someone who supposedly needs money for a family member's life-saving operation, or even an email that appears to come from someone you know, and it might be a virus attached now, emails with viruses attached aren't very common anymore, but they still happen occasionally. The next method is what we call phishing emails. It's spelled different, but it's the same basic concept. They are emails that attempt to trick you into clicking a link that supposedly takes you to a legitimate website requesting you to update your personal information. A classic example is an email that allegedly came from eBay. It's critical that these emails look authentic, as well as the websites that the email points you to. This method relies on you being ignorant and gullible. It's just like actual phishing. The email is the bait. You are the unsuspecting fish. If you take that bait, the person on the other end of that fishing pole has you right where they want you. It's pretty easy to avoid this trap if you're aware of it. Just don't click the link. No company is going to email you asking you to click link in order to update your personal information. And if for some reason you're still not sure, just call the company. If they actually wanted you to update your information, they'll confirm that they sent the email, or they'll take your information over the phone. It might take you an extra 15-20 minutes to get things straight. But that's much better than 5 or 10 years trying to rebuild your credit. The last major method of social engineering is website banners and as. Ok, 
okay, this will never be legitimate. No, but he is just going to give you free stuff just for clicking an ad. You either have to buy something else, jump through a million hoops, or it's simply a virus waiting to infect your computer if you click the ad. Do I even need to tell you banner ads like this one are fake? They're fake. General rule. If something seems too good to be true, don't click it. The next topic is online protection. Pretty important subject these days. One of my certifications is called Security Plus. It deals with everything from network security, virus protection, strong password creation, data encryption, wireless security, even ethical hacking. There is plenty of security software out there. Now for the average home user. One of the first lines of defense is a good antivirus program. Some might say a firewall is the first line of defense. That is indeed a valid argument. But most modern operating systems have a firewall built in, Windows being the prime example. Granted there are better third-party firewalls on the market, some that are free, and some that cost a pretty penny. But again, for the average user, who is well informed, the built-in firewall is more than sufficient. For those of you who didn't know what a firewall is, in the most basic terms, it's like an air filter. It lets in stuff you want, and keeps out the stuff you don't. So back to antivirus. Free or not free. That is the question. Some tech people will tell you that you have to pay for real protection. That's just not true. There are several good, free antivirus solutions out there. They are simply not as comprehensive as some that you pay for. I usually explain it this way. Say you're going for a bike ride. You have two choices. You can either look like a football player with pads on every inch of your body. Or you can just wear a bicycle helmet and maybe elbow and knee pads. If you go with the football uniform, you will be totally protected from pretty much anything. A Mack truck could hit you, and you would probably just get up and shake it off. But you will also be bulky, it will be more difficult to move, and you will be slower, because of all the extra weight. However, if you choose the bicycle helmet and pass, you're protecting the most likely points of contact. You're lightweight, mobile and fast. But you might want to keep an eye out for that Mack truck. Are you seeing the comparison? You're either protected to a certain degree, and you're lightweight. Or you're a juggernaut, protected from everything, but usually heavy, slow, and sluggish, now you can have the bicycle uniform usually for free. The football uniform, however, will cost you. It's all up to your personal preference. This also applies to anti-spyware applications. There are good free ones and also good paid ones. The same analogy applies here as well. Spyware, sometimes called malware, is any malicious program or file that isn't a virus. 
key loggers, Trojan horses, pop up as these are difficult examples of malware. So what's the best antivirus or anti-spyware program? People ask me that a lot. And they want me to tell them a specific program to use. But the best prevention isn't found in the computer program. It's that big three pound piece of fat in your head. Yes, your brain is the best antivirus program. If you think about what you're doing online, you'll probably prevent 95% of all malicious attacks on your computer. Your brain is able to proactively reason whether something is safe. All antivirus programs have to react to threats based on a set of predetermined criteria. A virus has to exist before an antivirus can be updated to protect you from it. For that reason, any antivirus is always a step behind the newest viruses. This is why I say that your mind is the most effective antivirus Here are some general rules. As I said before, think before you click. Very important. The next goes hand in hand with the first. If it sounds too good to be true, it definitely is. And if all else fails, contact your computer guy. I recommend the small one or two person computer service establishment. They will take much better care of you than the big box stores. Your computer guy will gladly answer questions, recommend appropriate software, provide personal service and actually remember your name. And if you don't have a computer guy, magical. Okay, the next subject we'll look at is general maintenance of your computer. This section will be solely focused on maintaining Windows for two reasons. One, the vast majority of us use Windows. And two, let's face it, compared to Mac, Windows requires far more maintenance. Things like disk cleanup, disk defragmenting, registry cleanup, all can help keep your system running smoothly. Now I haven't really recommended any specific software thus far. And I've done that purposefully, because my opinion of the best software is just that, my opinion. And if this video is seen a year from now, my recommendations may have changed. With that said, when it comes to software that deletes files, and especially software that alters your registry, you have to be insanely careful. If the wrong registry values are deleted, or even changed, it can cause stability issues, or it can even cause Windows not to start. So in this case, I will recommend a program that I have found to be safe yet effective at cleaning your system. And it's free. It's called CCleaner. It's very simple, clean, but very powerful. I still strongly encourage you to be careful. The program does a good job of guiding you and warning you of changes that may cause issues. But again, think before you click. Now maintenance goes beyond cleaning unused stuff off your hard drive. 
the physical computer needs to be cleaned occasionally. Electronics, especially computers, are dust magnets. Unfortunately, they also hate dust. Computers can run very, very hot. Consequently, they have air vents, fans, and sometimes radiators to dissipate all that heat. Well, dust can collect on the air vents and even on the components inside the computer. Because dust is a great insulator, it holds in that heat. Your computer will automatically shut down if it gets too hot. But excessive heat can damage and even begin to melt the components inside the case. For this reason, your computer needs to be blown out about twice a year, both outside and inside. Little bottles of compressed air can be found at any electronic store or much cheaper online. Just be sure to follow the directions on the container. One other tip. This is just my recommendation. Shut down your computer when no one is using it. Some people will tell you it's better to leave it running all the time. Supposedly it ensures the longevity of the components inside. No one knows for sure. I say shut it down for several reasons. One, you'll save a little money on your energy bill. Two, it will collect less dust being shut down. And three, it's impossible to catch a virus, be hacked, or have your data stolen if your computer is shut down. I also recommend plugging all your computer stuff into a search protector. If you flip off the search protector, your computer will draw absolutely no power and be even more protected. Okay, last topic, backup. At the time of this video, I've been in the computer field for over 13 years. I've seen so many people lose their files because they didn't have a backup. Either lightning fried their computer, a nasty virus wiped out their files, or the computer simply crashed out of the blue. It happens every day, and it happens to people who are considered computer experts. Now you can pay an annual subscription for online storage. That is definitely one option. I don't necessarily recommend it. I don't want my personal files, my personal information, my tax documents, my login information stored on some server. That could be anywhere. I know the files are encrypted before they are stored on the server, but given enough time any encryption can be broken. I have a much simpler solution. For the price of two or three years of online backup, you can buy a very nice, large capacity external hard drive this is actually one of my hard drives. I like this particular drive because it's so portable and it doesn't need to be plugged into the wall. This one will hold a terabyte of data. I won't even try to explain how much data that is. Let's just say you could put every CSI episode ever made on it twice. That's a lot. With proper care it can last 10 years, or more. I always know where my personal files are. I don't have to have internet to access my files. And if I unplug it, no one can steal my files. 
simple. And simple is always better. And there are numerous free backup programs that are appropriate for home users. I would suggest one that runs in the background and automatically does the work for you after you set it up of course. You can also use optical discs. These won't provide nearly the capacity of a hard drive. However, theoretically they provide more long-term storage. Optical discs would be appropriate to store in a safety deposit box or anywhere that is dark and relatively cool. Well that concludes this little workshop. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative. Thank you.